the homeless person walking on the same side of the street as you. You don't want your dog to just totally be like, oh, no big deal here. No, it might be a big deal. They need to get their hair up a little bit. And what you can do is you can start to tighten up on the leash and I would start to shake a little bit. So the f- dog feels your nervousness on the leash as that person's approaching. And then they start to look at that person and be like, something's not right here. And that's how you can kind of condition them if they're not naturally conditioned to be on guard for odd behavior or odd looks. Beckman Unleashed podcast number 45. We are live. I don't have a football player's number for 45. It's some um, fullback or a safety. That's Who's that? basically it. I don't have one. You don't have one? Okay. All I know is 45 is Michael Jordan when he came back. When he came back. That's and true. he's the GOAT, so that's what we're going to go with for this podcast. A great, great point, 45. All right. Here's what we're going to do in this podcast. We are going to talk about, a, we're going to start a series on g- working dogs. And today we're going to talk about the guarding dogs and breeds and which breeds are good and what what they're good for. There's flock protection, in my, my opinion, flock protection, home protection, personal protection. Three very different things. Cool. And stay tuned because we're going to be talking about some changes to the podcast. So after the dog segment, we're going to talk about how the podcast is changing. So yes. Stick around for that. And I think 95% of you are going to like it. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot better. We believe it makes it better. Yeah. All right. Guarding breeds. So here's how I organize guarding breeds in my mind and to you guys. Like I said, there's three different types. I think there is flock protection, home protection, and personal protection. Flock protection you have just coming to mind because I don't prepare a ton for this topic. You brought it up about 10 minutes ago. You didn't prepare anything. No, which is uh, good and bad. So flock protection. You have Anatolian, Anatolian dogs. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've got um, uh, Great Pyrenees, and I'm forgetting one more like big, gnarly, good one. Um, Tibetan Mastiffs, maybe to a degree, but not so much. I'll, I'll remember it. What kind of flock are you speaking of? Generally, sheep and goats. Okay, these dogs, you 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 let them go live with the flock. Mm -hmm. all the time. They just live out there, live with the flock. They need training. A lot of dogs, people think like, if you just put a dog out there, it'll just do its job and some will, but some need training from the older dogs and whatnot. But you, you kind of have to let them be with the flock, right? They have to want to protect the flock, be a part of the flock. And they're working dogs. I I don't think, you know, they're in the house much. If you want a good one, Mm -hmm. they're, they're out there and they're on guard and they're on guard at night against wolves and coyotes in different countries. Wolves, I have all these videos of these Anatolians like fighting with, you know, a bunch of wolves. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah. Well, I showed you that one the other day, right? Where it had heard the coyotes going and then it kind of oh, like yeah. brought them all into the corral or whatever. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So flock protections, flock protection. I'm not going to get too much into that. Then there is home protection. Now, why would home protection be different than personal protection? The personal protection dogs are a little more about the people and especially one person and going, don't mess with this person than they are about the home. So like a chow could be a little more like, or Nikita or even a Rottweiler to a degree could be a little more like, you're not getting near this freaking house or this Mm. fence. Like this is my spot. Yeah. Whereas a Doberman or a Malinois, not say a Doberman would let someone walk in the front door. I'm not saying that. They're a little more like, let me look at this human, my guy, and do we trust this person? That's very different from you walk into my front gate, the chow bites them, which happens, mm-hmm. as opposed to the Doberman going, not sure about this guy walking in the front da- front gate. What does John think about guy walking in the front gate? Or a Malinois going, hmm, I wonder what John thinks about this guy. Whereas a Nikita is like, I don't care what John says. No one comes in my gate. Yeah, cross the line. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then can you break it down later for how it relates to like protecting a home versus protecting a property to where like you go further out where maybe one dog is better for someone coming into the home where it's going to attack versus just keeping people, you know, at bay. Okay. So if, let, let me answer your question like this. If I were to 
condition a dog to protect like a home. Like let's say you don't live in an apartment or a house or something. You're kind of maybe sub- suburbs or out a little farther. I would not um, socialize my Rottweiler all that well. You have it running around the yard and stuff though, right? I would have it at home. I'd have it with the kids. I'd have it with the family. I would not be going out saying, be great with everybody. Like, I don't know if Prince is that great of a home protection dog. Mm -hmm. He has been too darn socialized. And and not that we have a lot of people over, but I just don't know if he'd be that great because he's too happy and he's met too many people. I would be like, this is the home. Anything abnormal, Rottweiler, car showing up and dude getting out we need to think that's a little off well you're not big on like sending dogs into the community all the time anyways right like unnecessarily like let's go to dinner let's bring our rottweiler yeah i guess i'm not that big on that that's true just a yeah. philosophy that you are you yeah. just not into it right yeah i guess i i don't talk about it that much yeah that's probably true but it's not for protection purposes i'm just like well, you just don't think it's necessary right yeah well i think it's one, it's it's too much right now. We have over everyone's going to restaurants with their dogs constantly. Yeah. And dogs are laying, don't get me started, bro. Dogs are laying in the middle of the aisle and children are having to tiptoe around dogs and the owner's sitting there eating while their dog lays and everyone has to avoid their dog laying there. Mm-hmm. Like that would be like my child, like just laying on the ground and everyone's got to avoid my child. If it was a child, people would go. What's your child doing laying there? I have to avoid them. But when it's a dog, everyone's like, oh, we just avoid dogs constantly. I don't mind the dog. It's not the dog's fault. What's the mm. owner doing? Yeah. So that's a different We should story. come back to that at the end of the podcast. Okay. You want to talk me trash up. about all that stuff. It's the worst, dude. Who are these people that think their dog is more important? Uh, and here's the big, bigger point. If you want to bring your dog places, here's here's the criteria. A child has to be able to fall on your dog without your dog biting the child. Yeah. Because children fall. Is it the dog's fault? No. But it's your fault because you brought them in public where children fall Mm -hmm. and your dog can't accept it because kids can't get bit. It's not even your dog's fault. It's it's the owner's fault. It's the owner's fault. Don't bring your dog out. If would you bring you you can't go out and then some guy just glances you on the street and you punch him in the face. Like you, the, there has to be restraint. Like things happen in the world and you and your dog have to be able to handle things. If your dog can't handle it, mm-hmm. they shouldn't be out there. Well, there needs to be some simple rules. If your dog can't handle a train going by, don't b- go by train tracks. I yeah. get it. Why a dog won't be able to handle a train. What are you doing by train tracks then? Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was Sorry. just going to think about with the rules that you need to have in place. Cause I watch the different videos on YouTube and some guy will be like, my dog's off leash. Look how good he's off leash. And then someone will say, Hey, put your dog on a leash and go, I don't need, it doesn't need to be on a leash. So at some extent, I understand the idea that my dog is so well-trained, but at the other end, how does everyone do else know that your That's dog is trained? Totally there's true. no mechanism or there's no certification to be like, this is a top 1% dog. So then that's a, that's one side of it. And then the other side is, um, just people, like have their their dogs on leash or off leash or take them to places. And it's like, it's still dangerous even whether they're on a leash or off leash. Like they're still not really ready to go into the real world, right? So it's like um, one guy was had his pit bull on a leash and the other two dogs were off the leash. And he's like, get those dogs off the, or get those dogs out of here. And it goes, well, uh, no, they're not, they're not, they're fine. He's like, this dog isn't. And he had yeah. a pit bull. He's like, get them away from my yeah. dog. You lose if your dog's off leash. True. I agree. You lose. You're breaking the law, at least where we live. I don't even care about that in you a care way. About, you don't care about the law of the land? Not really. I care about you lose if your dog's off. Like you're, the, you're the problem. Mm-hmm. Like everyone knows this. They see these, but I see the same videos. Two dogs run up to a dog. The reactive dog's on a leash. The Even the people with the dog running up are like, oh, he's fine. Or, But you can have a reactive dog in a park on a leash. That's your right. You cannot have a reactive dog on a leash in a restaurant. That is two different things. You cannot have a reactive dog on a leash in a dog park. That is an off-leash place. You should not have a reactive dog on a leash, maybe in a pseudo dog park. You know, it's so, and we'll, we'll switch back to the other topic, but it's so frustrating that like the common retort is always 
oh, it's fine. He's fine. It's good. It's like, and the guy who had the pit bull was like, it's not fine. Get the dogs away from my dog because my dog is going to tear your yeah. chow to shreds. Yeah. Reactive, aggressive dogs are everywhere. Like, and, and, um, and they can be on a leash, you know, in a reasonable place, a neighborhood. No dog should run up to a dog ever. I know they're running up on a dog and it's like, Hey, you're, yeah. you're the problem. Your dog is running up on another dog and you don't know anything about the history of this yeah. dog, Yeah, you know? And it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. It's frustrating. So anyways, guarding dogs. Yeah. Did I explain, I mean, my just mini, uh, talk on guarding. So dogs. You, what about personal dogs? Like what personal, what's protection. a type of personal protection dog? And Malinois. Then Malinois. Roddy's. And well, it's Dober different for different things, right? Like there could be, cause you, in a sense, could you have a, you have dogs run with like a platoon or something in some cases, right? Or maybe oh. you have them cause they're out in. Yeah. Uh, we're not really talking it's about really only that. for just like a bodyguard ish. Yeah. I'm not even talking about like in the sport of, you know, shits in or these other sports, that's like you're training a dog to do a job. Like I'm talking about the average everyday person who just, just wants to kind of condition their dog to be wary of a guy walk, coming in the window. Or how about yeah. a guy coming in the front door? How about a person? Like you really don't want your dog to light up somebody coming on your property unannounced. Hmm. I mean, the, the problem is nowadays it's so different than it used to be, right? Where like when we grew up, it's kind of like that joke with Sebastian, but it's all people are just showing up. Who comes to my door unannounced other than you do, uh, but you have your own little way well, you walking get Walking in your home is different than coming. I meant coming on your, coming through a gate in your front area or something. But like, if you think about it, who the hell is coming to visit you nowadays? You just, That's at least true. out here, it's usually people that are yeah, trying no to tell you over. stuff. Doesn't yeah. mean that they should be attacked by a dog, yeah. of course, but the, so the, even those signs, this is what an animal control person told me years ago. She said, don't, I didn't have this, but she told me don't have a beware of dog sign because you are admitting aggression. Somebody can essentially come on your property. I'm not saying your home in your home, but someone can come on your property and it, and your dog cannot bite them. Or you might get sued if your dog bites them. It's sort of like gun laws and stuff too. Hmm. Um, I think the way you solve this is you think about what would the common sense law be and then whatever the opposite of that is, that's what the law actually yeah, is. Yeah, at least in this state. Yes, for yeah. sure in this state. Yeah. So, you are you know, is that right? No, that's not right. Um, because there are handicapped people that will like come on a property. What about Malinois? And, and it's like not their, I, I don't want to say not their fault, but you know what I'm saying? What the hell are they doing on my property is my question to you. There are people who don't know. I don't know. I don't, I mean. Like they're handicapped. That is, that is one of the they're things. Handicapped, it's like somebody. Still like why, where'd they come from? Why are they on the property? Yeah. You have understand. a fence out here. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, yeah, your dog has to practice some restraint. If you don't want to get sued. If you don't want to get sued. Yeah. If you don't care about getting sued, then maybe it doesn't. Yeah. It's similar. I mean, it's similar to like gun laws in a way like it's very similar right actually it is like you'll in this state i believe if someone breaks in and you you'll go to jail yeah. no matter what you have to and be, then you have to prove that you shouldn't be in jail yeah you have to be if you do something basically fearing for your life which can you imagine think about this is the law but think about like somebody breaks into this your house crazy like when someone if someone breaks into your house in my mind you're already in fear for your life in in your like, okay in now e there's some strange in man every in my house i don't know what he's doing in every reasonable person's mind you have children in that house and then but the the state says you have to like wait this it's the guy's got to have a it's, gun it's on the you thing right he's got to have a gun on you <laughs> pointed at you and like be ready to pull the trigger and then you can do it maybe maybe not no i'm, I'm sure you can in that case but I mean, you, who knows but yeah it's I it's mean, it's out of control but and, they're like and, hey he was just going to rob you. Why'd you shoot him? There's people who think that. I know. There's like 40, 30% of the population who actually believe that. I know. My, my thought is, is as a, you're, you're, you, I'm you've done, father. you've done well in life. Like, okay. Give your, give some stuff away, dude. I know just, yeah. Like was, he uh, is not doing well in life. Yeah. He was, he, he's, yeah, he was like, uh, he needs your stuff. People are like, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. It, it's, it's just really weird that anyone in my mind, anyone who enters the house, especially with kids in it, just unannounced, should be 
just i'm not gonna say i am i feel all i'm saying is i feel threatened yes at the highest level. at the very at the very least you feel threatened yeah. and we have to be careful what we say with we YouTube. actually do one, we actually do we one, have to be careful one day we're going to start some type of off-grid i was off-grid off-grid dog style technology which we are actually are kind of working on in a way where we can we, say whatever where we, we could sh yeah say whatever we want but think about that video we just posted that got demonetized that yeah. we're like what the heck did it get demonetized for then we you emailed them or whatever know. and they're yeah. like you none of your business <laughs> none of your business we, we have no idea right no idea isn't that frustrating yeah yeah frustrating that made to me tens of dollars on that video tens of dollars no i would have made more than that's that. a lot um so the protection stuff i, I think for my money but there's it's different and Nikita is different than a doberman they're both protection dogs dobermans were 200 years ago i think by a tax collector sort of meant to look intimidating everything about a doberman is meant to look intimidating the ears the tail the barrel chest the colorations everything and to be personal protection really read the person and go are we cool with this person dude are we cool uh, an Akita is not meant to do that. An Akita was bred a thousand years ago, and they a thousand years ago, man. You go on a property, you you expect to get bit in a farm in Japan, like, and that's what they're bred for. They'll bite you, dude. You're not supposed to be on. You're not supposed to be there. Doberman, Malinois, Roddy. Uh, there's other random breeds, but like are a little better. At going, or do we like this person? I've said that ten times, but I think it's an important uh, distinction. So while you were talking about that, I just, yeah. I couldn't help myself, but go to this thread I had about, uh, on February 4th. Right. And it was just, you know, a meme that was sent to me. So I'm just, I'm not saying it's one thing or the other. I'm just, this is what was sent. It says them razor wire is inhumane. And then it says us, not if you don't try to climb over it. Yes. Right. Yes. And then, um, says lo lock and then was locking your door is inhumane. What if someone is hungry? Right? Yeah. And then my friend says, then they're hungry enough to knock, right? Yeah. And that kind of like sums up the yeah. guard dog stuff. Yeah. And yeah, but you're right. It is like guard dog, home protection. But what do you think about getting a guard dog for home protection versus maybe just seeing what the laws are in your state about getting some type of carry or whatever it might be? Dude, a guard dog... A dog is the, like the greatest line of defense ever. You think? Absolutely. Get a hundred pound Rottweiler. Who's who's doing it? Who's testing whether that Rottweiler is nice? So we had we had some in our house. You guys have seen Prince a hundred times. I think Prince is the nicest looking dog ever. Like I don't think anybody's scared of Prince. We had um, one of my wife's old friends from the East Coast. She came stayed with us one night. She sat there and she's just like, is he going to attack me? She was, and she's not as scared of dogs. And she was just like multiple times. She said, she didn't say it quite like that, but multiple what? times she was just like nervous, like his look and his actual look at her. It It's off putting. It's scary. I forget it. What makes you think he looks friendly? Because I've looked at a Doberman's face for the last 20 years. Two nice Dobermans. I've just stared at their faces and gone does he bat his eyelashes is that what is happening it's just i'm a doberman guy so what about what about bosco yeah n the nicest dog ever yeah but does he look friendly because as, as a lay person yes. you remember the story right when you had him in the back of the sequoia and you and opened, opened it up door. and i saw him and i was like holy shnikes yeah yeah so that i need to go off that yeah for his I'm actual going, look not my like what i think badass maniac yeah. Yeah, he's a sweetheart, but he's also maybe not a sweetheart. Like he was a sweetheart because you're like, hey, this guy's cool. Yeah. But what no. if you're like, go get him? No, I think he would have tore me a new one. No, no. Bosco. I never trained that. No, I could train it, but I didn't train it with either of them. Um, mm. So that's interesting. So can we talk about Malinois are obviously all the rage right now. And then so, so are Connie oh, Corsos. Corsos are the best. But so I wanted to compare those two because it thanks for bringing for me. Corsos. I was thinking like. I would want a Kane Corso for this type of defense. Um, so can you compare those two? And then the last thing I would think is like, you know how they always talk about, oh, well, if you get a gun, then it's you're more likely to end up getting shot with your gun. 
how do you relate that to a dog, right? Where it's like, maybe you end up getting dominated or bit by your own dog when you have those type of dogs. Maybe. So like, are you actually safer than you were if you just oh God. took the L? These are deep questions, bro. You can't handle it? No, I can handle it. I got to organize it in my brain. So um, let me let me yeah, first say Connie Malinois Corso. Con in my Connie. opinion, a Connie Corso is the most guarding, the best guarding breed there is. They're they're all into their owners and they're all not messing around. Now, uh, you got to be maybe Garrett Wing or Joel Beckman or something to like have this bulletproof dog out in public. They're out there. People have them. But man, you're going to run up against guarding and you better know how to handle it, whether it's in your home or on walks. You're, you know, you can run up against. So don't adopt them is what you're saying. Well, Garrett Wing D does, wants me to probably tell people not to adopt them. Maybe Jason Corey wants me to say that too, but I mean, cause well, they, they can handle them, but they talk about them and I've trained many of them. Like these guys are not for everybody. Yeah. You always go, well, and they're all it, the rage. it's not a problem. You're like one hundredth of 1% can handle them. Yeah. One, it's like, what, what about the rest of the people that have absolutely, that probably can't handle yeah. a donation. Yeah, that's true. Um, and Malinois are just, they're just high energy working working dogs you cannot get my opinion okay everything on this is my opinion uh you cannot get the working line out of a malinois uh, like it, it would be german shepherds maybe 20 years ago or something i don't know they they you cannot like go we're gonna raise calm ones like there's too much police work lines in them to just and i'm not saying a calm like a it. chilling one like a millennia yeah it'd take you out. some yeah. time like this started a while ago you just couldn't get that lines out the working line the serious working line out of them yeah. But they're Connie Corsos and Malinois are two very different dogs. Yeah. Very different. Both need a super strong owner. Yes. And then here's the issue too, right? If you're a super strong owner that can really handle that type of stuff, do you really need a guard dog to yes. protect you? Yes. Sometimes you do. Yeah. I mean, what are you? You're like, I'm going to self defense these people coming in. Like, I know jujitsu and I'm six feet tall. Uh, I mean, I, I just think, in th I don't think in terms of dog for, I mean, I think that's a great, a dog is a great thing for the home defense. It's the great. personal defense thing. It gets a bit complicated because there's this like element of discernment. It's like, how does the dog know in public? Obviously it has good instincts, but like, how does it necessarily know great where question. to draw that line? Great question. So you need some, I mean, r will a lab do it? Yeah. You could probably train him to do it. You should make them wary of weirdness. Yeah. Okay. Like weird behavior. Weird behavior, weird look, mm -hmm. weird that somebody my dad didn't say hi to is on our property. That's odd. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna look at this guy a little bit different and try to figure out why dad didn't say hi to this guy and he's walking along, he's walking in here. And I'm gonna stand up tall and I'm gonna look at him in the eye, or I'm gonna bark and look, which is gonna bring dad. Like you want. You don't necessarily want a prince for this stuff. It's also like what you're saying. They can handle anything, you know? It's like this level of like, it's like a um, a series of, of uh, perform or not performances, but of what they need to do. Like, so it's like, oh, I'm going to stare at him. Yeah. Now I'm going to alert my yeah. owner if he's home. Yeah. And then it would, it, yeah. it could escalate from there at different yeah. stages. And the dog could be taught all of those. Yeah. Stages, and, and then right? there's like actual bite work and cues to go bite the arm like that. That's a whole different story, right? Which is next level stuff. Yeah, that's attacking, right? That's a, yeah. And that's yeah. on cue. And the good dog goes between your legs of the kid and like stares at the person like that's next level. Awesome. Cool stuff. We're talking about you got a Roddy. You don't want random people showing up on your property. What, what do you do? You make the rot. Why do I say Roddy? I think they're the people best love protection dogs. I think they're the best. Yeah. Okay. Because they're, they're, they, I don't know why they're the best. They're just, they're better in Dobermans. They're better than they're better Connie than Corsos. Why did I say Connie Corsos is the most protect? You don't want the most protection dog in yeah. the world. Like you're, it's good for protection. It ain't good for the, oh, sh he bit yeah. someone walking yeah. in the house. Like that kind of sucks. Yeah. You're not a prime minister. Like you, it's, there's levels of protection right. that one needs. Right. But I, I was going to say the reason why, Rottweilers are better than German Shepherds is because my neighbors across the street growing up had two Rottweilers and one German Shepherd. And that one German Shepherd was the one that knit me when I was running. Yeah. And I think that was just a shepherdish 
in it that yeah. they were very worried about. But the other two, Freya and Jetta, those two are gnarly looking dogs and neither of them ever did anything to me. They're just calmer than German shepherds. Yeah. They're more predictable, right? Dobermans are calmer than uh, Malinois. Like they're just a, a chiller. They're, they're more raw female German shepherds, especially. I mean, they could be out of their minds, yeah. literally like out of their minds. Yeah. Like not well in the head. A yeah, lot. And of that's them. all basically the misbreeding of the animal, right? Over a long period of time. Yeah. And, and so, so back to the point, then we can get on to the other topic, which is about the podcast, yeah. I think, um, is I like that concept of like we weirdness, you know, you would never go, Hey, um, someone put your hood on and like, come into my house. Like you would want that dog to train them to be good with everybody. You wouldn't do that. You'd want that dog to, to. If a burglar comes in with his hood up, you know, to not be seen, you want your dog to seriously, like, have never seen that before. Mm -hmm. You want the if a homeless guy, right? Homeless people right now, it's a big problem. And they're more aggressive. I'm, I'm 48 years old. It was not like this 20 years ago. The homeless people are 10x more aggressive than they were 20 years ago. Yeah. It's fact. I've, I've walked down the street 20 years ago. And I've walked down the street a year ago. The homeless population is different you now it's worse though is or i remember back in the day we think we've talked about on the podcast is that portland in um seattle had extremely aggressive homeless populations when? much more so that like 10 20 years ago than san diego i'm from eugene but like people it was like they were more it was a thing there to like demand money from people and if they didn't give you money they were like what are you doing and like yelling like they were really like highly pressuring people to give them money. Right. So which there, didn't happen in San Diego, maybe until more recently. Yeah, you're probably right. So someone did something a study on this. Um, and they said that um because when there's violent, like not like a gang element in a city, it keeps the homeless element down. And when there's I'm sure. And then when there's not, Makes sense. so the, the 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 homeless, these sort of petty crimes become very big. It's a very interesting it's thing. It's kind of like the mafia, right? Like, yeah, you don't it, it, it goes back to your point earlier about weird behavior, right? Like the mafia, the gangs, right? They don't want weird behavior going on yeah. in the neighborhood. Like yeah. if there's weird behavior, they're going to be the ones that get to do it. Right. So yeah. you don't just start creating drama when it's well-regulated. Yeah. You right? need a well-regulated, uh, militia, <laughs> militia. <laughs> ah, so you don't want your dog to, you know, the person, the, the homeless person walking on the same side of the street as you, you don't want your dog to just totally be like, Oh, no big deal here. No, it might be a big deal. They need to get their hair up a little bit. And what you can do is you can start to tighten up on the leash and I would start to shake a little bit. So the dog feels your nervousness on the leash as that person's approaching. And then they start to look at that person and be like, something's not right here. And that's how you can kind of condition them if they're not naturally conditioned to be on guard for odd behavior or odd looks. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. Yeah. Um, cool. Real quick. Yeah. A couple of things I, I don't want to forget. I have a uh, talk about Caesar I want to ask you about, but before we do that, can you tell them a little bit about any quick progress on the Beckman so, ventures at Gmail? Oh, Beckman ventures at gmail.com is what you, what you email. If you want to be part of the Beckman coaching program to become a dog trainer or to be a better dog trainer, we're going to have all the operant conditioning, classical conditioning, um, uh, um, learned helplessness, all the theories. I've made the videos on that. It's my opinion on yeah. them. Aggression, um, reactivity, aggression, helper reactivity, dogs, helper dogs, all that business, stuff. social mm -hmm. media, and it's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, we'll leave it at that because we talked about it. In the description, Ventures at gmail.com. Email why you want to be a part of it. Yeah. And this is not for your typical dog trainer that just wants, or that somebody that just wants, has a dog that wants to train it. It's for yeah. people that want to be a dog trainer. Right. Like Joel. Right. Essentially. It's good for dog walkers. Oh, it's yeah. It's good for dog um, because they can add training to their deer. It's good like for dog daycare people because they're already on their way because they have so much darn dog knowledge. Yeah. They could actually take this course and then become a dog trainer probably very quickly. Anyone who works with dogs in a professional capacity it can transfer real quick. Yeah, like yeah. even canines and other type of stuff like that, I imagine would probably benefit yeah. in some way. Yeah. Right? So anyway, so that's, is that a good enough pitch yeah. for that? Okay, cool. So if you're interested, 
hit the email up and tell us why you think you should be in part of it. And uh, yeah. that's it, right? Yeah. Okay. It. Uh, cool. Then the next piece, let's It'll talk launch, about- launch, um, we hope April 1st, which is in two weeks. Yeah. So cool. Uh, we don't even need to sleep. Let's just get it out April 1st, right? Yep. Cool. Um, podcast. Yep. Talk a little uh, housekeeping about the podcast. Okay. Here's what's going to happen, guys. We believe, we don't believe, we are going to try and we think it's going to work and we think you're going to like it. Yes. This is big news. We are going to do the podcast. We are going to do it as a YouTube live. It's like Bill O'Reilly. We'll do it live. We'll write it and we'll do it live. Yep. Um, as a live. So you can still watch it whenever you want to watch it. But if you want to be there live to comment and we will might go to the comments live, we're going to do it Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Yes. Okay. We're going live Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Be there live. And we'll, what we can do is we can now go to the comments and sort of see what's working and see what they're saying live on the fly. And then we can go that direction. Address interesting questions. But we'll, we'll have a plan all the same. We're not just going to read comments. And do not, do not, like my lives in the past is literally 500 people just going, how do I train my dog not to jump? And I don't mean to disparage everyone who's commented, but like, that's not it, dude. Be a part of the podcast. Yeah, Don't ask me a herd. bunch of questions. Be a part of the herd, guys. Yeah. I, I think there's a, a few things on this. So with the lives, um, so we've had uh, our Patrick, right? We had Molly from the um, the raw food, right? So we yep. had, we we like the idea of getting the pod more integrated into, right. and we're going to figure other ways to get people more involved and even more involved live. But there's a certain, and then another reason is a lot of people wouldn't do this live, but for instance, probably we've only edited maybe three to five of the last 45 podcasts. So we don't even edit them. We just record them and put them out. So yeah. there's no reason not to do it live. Right. Um, but there's just, I think a different energy and excitement when it's live and we get the feedback from yeah. you guys. And then we also last week addressed um, or asked about the timing of it and the length of it and so forth and what people thought. Um, about 85, 90% of the comments all said that they want it weekly. Don't stop doing it weekly. So I think this will also just give us another time. But the point of this is that we might begin next week. Oh, how That's to find it. it. So when you go to YouTube, there's like videos and then there will be a set like podcast. There's a section that says lives. Yeah. You click lives, it'll be in there. Yeah. So it won't be in the normal video section. Now. And if you don't watch it live and you watch it after and you comment, we will still read those comments or some of them during the live podcast. So you don't have to just be there commenting. If you watch it later, you can still comment like you do now. And we'll read it. And we'll read it on the live podcast. We will see you live on the 26th at 3 p.m. Correct? 3 p.m. Cool. All right. Um, breed of the week. Uh, or we'll, you want to do Let's do breed of the week real quick. Then we'll get to the comments. Okay. Okay. I don't breed know what week, it is. Yes. It is Anatolian shepherd. And I know you just mentioned that, but we talked about it earlier. Ah, oh, bro. I've trained two of them. So you're an expert. So I don't know much about them. Yeah. They're, they're gnarly dogs. They are not putting up with any nonsense ever. The ones I've trained, the, you've got to condition them at a very young age to be like, like you got to be, I uh, Tibetan Mastiffs are in that category. This one Tibetan Mastiff came to me at like 12 weeks old. His owners left. He like ran up to the owners. He was like, where are you guys going? And I just kind of grabbed his collar and he turned around and attacked my hand. He's like, you're not stopping me from doing anything I want to do. And so that's how these guys can kind of be. So you've got to be this sort of real leader, like mm. who's, who's, who's just, and who's, um, because at some point they may, they're different even than, than a Connie Corsa or a Malinois or any of these dogs. Like they are a more serious dog than any of these dogs. I'd said Connie Corsa are the best guarding dogs or the most protective dogs. These guys are great with their family, but they have a point and there are, there are, even to their owner, there is a point at which they're like, no, I'm not, I, I, I'm not taking this from you, right? You're like, I'm going to flip my dog and tell him that I'm the boss. That guy might be like, no, you're not. Yeah. He's like, you don't punk me, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking tougher than you, bro. Um, 
that's what the dog will might might say. I like this. It's affectionate with the family. One out of five. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. good with children. Three out of five. That's not that bad though. Yeah. Good with other dogs. Three out of five. Physical. Let's hear about this. Affectionate one. What else is one drooling? Drooling one. That's good. Drooling sucks. Drooling sucks. These big dogs that do this, like every time they drink, there's just water all over your house. It, you need to think about that before a dog. Did you see that short where that dog, that lady had like a towel next to her dog's drinking bowl? Yeah. And trained it to drink, do it. And then trained it to like put its, and it's a bulldog, right? They have a huge problem with drooling, right? Mm -hmm. Worse than others. I thought that was funny. Um, openness to strangers, one, one, which is what you want, right? Watchdog protective nature, five, five, vigilant, adaptability level three. Let's see personality. Trainability level two. two. Everything else is in the middle. Self-willed. That's an interesting uh, way to look at it. Self-willed versus eager to please. Yeah. I'd say they're a one. What would be a one under self-willed compared to eager to please? Prince is a five on eager to please, right? Yeah. 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 Not too what vocal. What would be a one? Look up. I want to find a one if we yeah. can for self-willed. I would say, I, again, not to talk about well, Tibetan what's a Mastics, stubborn, the most stubborn dog? Like, I bet every dog's a two. Like a Chow's a two. An Akita might be a two or three. Tibetan Mastiff might be a... Picture could there. be like, if you looked at like... um, Like just random breeds. What is a dog that just doesn't listen? What? Like a dog that's just like obstinate. That dog. Yeah, but this one's only showing a two. Like, what's I know. the one? Let's I find know. it. That's, I don't know. Type in a chow. A chow chow. A chow? Yeah. Chow or chow chow? Chow chow is the whole the name. And this is the same as the other dog we were like, whoa. Holy cow. I do like how they break this up into different yeah, it's kind of fun. pieces. And we apologize to all of our lifestyle fans that do not like that we talk about dogs all day. But uh, personality, right? Train of self-will. It's, it's a, a three. three. Okay. Will you type in uh, uh, Tibetan Mastiff? Surely. Okay. Tibetan Mastiff. What do you guys think is the number one self-will dog? It's not a common dog. There's no, there's no common dog that is like super independent. Because that's not why you get a dog. You want trainability. I think, you know, it's self-willed is a wolf. Yeah, maybe a wolf. Coyote. You see that video, that coyote, this guy is like putting his hand out and this coyote's like creeping around and then he just comes and bites the guy's hand. It's a giant video. Three. Yeah, we're not. We're trainability. Not we're not hitting it. Yeah, I, I, I said it. I don't think you find a one. Most self-willed dog. Dog breed. Akita. Shiba Inu. Shiba Inus. It does. Say Akita. We search Akita and see if it shows up. Shiba Inu was second. And then they had, what did they have? A third of a, a, a terrier. But Akita and a Chow Chow are similar, right? No. No? They're both Asian breeds. I mean, they're similar. They're quite different, though. Let's see if we can try And Akita and Shiba Inu are similar. We've talked about them before. Yeah. Uh, Akita. Let's see if it's a. Then we'll move on. Yeah. This breed of the week um, got off of trainability. Oh, no, yeah. there are three. Yeah. Uh, for uh, our homework, we'll go look through every single. Hey, every our Patrick, breed. can you help us out here? Like, yeah. Okay. No, we, we can't figure it out. That's fine. So breed of the week. Anything else on Anatolian Shepherds before we. Breed of the week was stellar. No, I have nothing. We went way too far on that. Usually breed of the week is like three statements. Yeah. Really fast. So cool. Um, Before we go into comments, anything for apologies? Oh, I don't have one. I went off last week. Maybe an apology to you. I said... Um, Should I play the, the clip? Well, that's an apology. And then the other one that I found really funny, which I already forgot, was when... God, what did you say? You I said, said that I didn't want any smoke with the cows. And I said, what do you think? You're special? No yeah. one wants any smoke with the cows. People yeah. found that really funny. People thought that was funny. Let me play this for people real quick. This is what you said about SeaWorld. And I I hope you want to uh, maybe backtrack or apologize for what mm. you said about SeaWorld since you are a SeaWorld person. So let's see if we can click the present button again here. Maybe? So this is from the last podcast. They teach you oh, how yeah. to brew beer kind of thing. People loved it. That's and they drink. 
bunch of trunks. Our buddy, Mark, he actually went to SeaWorld on Saturday and he was saying it was super yeah. cool. That sucks. <laughs> that was horrible. You just trash SeaWorld. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. You're like, it sucks. Yeah. I, when I worked at SeaWorld, listen, say what you want. If, 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 oh, the, that, that, that's torture for those animals. I get it. I get it. Okay. Let's try to remove your hatred of animals in captivity. And let's just look at the entertainment value of two trainers of two whales coming up into a hydro hop, which is what it calls, and two trainers simultaneously doing flips off the whale and I'm landing there, right? in the water. And then imagine 5,000 people sitting there screaming and jumping up and kids everywhere thinking it's the greatest thing in the world. While they play that song, Jump For You Love by like the Pointer Sisters or somebody. Yeah, while they play some awesome music or a night show when it's 90 degrees, sticks. 90 degrees in Orlando, Tillicum comes out and annihilates the first 14 rows around. And then every child just thinks it's the single greatest thing while it's dark with lights and rock and roll music playing. Just the entertainment value of that. If you can possibly, not you, but if the, per, not, not the pod, but if people can separate that a little bit, um, it used to be freaking awesome. There was nothing more entertaining than in Orlando. San Diego to agree. I don't want to, I worked at both, but Orlando, they knew what they were doing than that. There was nothing more entertaining I've ever seen in my life than a night show with double whale rocket hops with trainers doing flips off the whales. No, San Diego. It might be the fire. single greatest thing ever. I was there. No, you when I was five years you old. You think it's fire. You were, never been you, to were Orlando, you were a baby at the time. You were 10. Yep. And it was fire. I remember yeah, the music. Awesome. Being there at night. I feel like glow sticks or other fluorescent yeah, stuff maybe. going on. And good music, getting splashed by the Shamu. Yeah. You haven't Shamu. had Are they all Shamu or no? They call them all Shamu. Okay. You haven't had that much joy in your life since that moment. Not is, since this is, podcast started. Is possible? Yeah, it was since the podcast. Yeah. So you, you that that literally was. It's a highlight of many people's lives. Now it's gone. It's fine. Okay. The animals need to be released into the wild where they will die. I'm not um, sure it was the highlight of my life, but I mean, it was, I'd say it was pretty cool. The happiest I've ever seen a group of people hitting like a game, like watching a stadium where someone hits a game winning shot is, is up is probably the most like, like imagine just joyful moments that last, you know, 10 it's seconds or five though, minutes. Yeah. And it's just, you're, you're just like exuberant at that moment. Like having yeah. children is not that it's, it's a different thing. Yeah, it's, Getting a... married is not that it's a different thing. Starting a new business and you hoping it does well is not that. Yeah. There's a level, but also cause it's in the entertainment bucket. Right. And so then there's right. levels of excitement within it. Like for instance, watching on a Saturday, good movie is not that. No. And on Saturday we were watching the UFC and uh, Dustin Poirier fought. And he was a big underdog. That's that. He he was That's a big that. underdog, right? I might have bet some money on him, maybe. And uh, he was getting beat up pretty well. And in the second round, he KOs that uh, Benoit Saint Denis, which was unexpected. Okay. And the place where I was at, yeah, went nuts. It we went were, nuts. Went crazy. So that's that. Okay. So those things are that. I was in Orlando, and my first day, and it's the summer. And I'm, it's not a hundred degrees in Orlando and okay. So it's hot and people are just happy because they're cool again. Mm -hmm. But man, when Tillicum came out and he splashed the whole rows, I, all I saw, I've told you this story. All I saw is these kids jumping and they were so happy. It was literally the happiest I've ever seen children in my life. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's, it's I mean, amazing. It's, I mean, and then kids love the connection with animals just like they like with the zoo and other things, right? They yeah, like killer whales. Yeah, they like um They're big. animals. They can see them underwater. Kids love animals. Yeah. So so that is cool and that is no longer happening. You know what would be cool too? At SeaWorld. It is not as cool as SeaWorld, but you would actually probably like it is the Maui Ocean Center. Is um they have like an kind of underwater kind of thing. I think they have this at the zoo too. They probably have it at SeaWorld where you actually walk through the tunnel and there's tiger sharks and stuff in yeah, there like that. They have a SeaWorld. Um, it's pretty neat though. And then they actually had a really cool 
you know those like 3D movies with the dome? They yeah. had that on um, basically like the the process of the humpback whales coming to Maui where they mate and then how that whole escort system. Do they have an escort system too with um, killer whales where they have like um, the escort basically follows along with the humpback whale and its uh, calf and it protects them through the mating season? It may or may not actually be the winner of the, the female, but it they have like an escort that follows it. You're not familiar. A male? Yeah, it's a male escort that follows it. And from it's Alaska. not necessarily the dad? It it's possibly it wants the to dad. be it wants to be but it like follows her around and kind of protects her oh. and I think they have these thing called competition pods they might have the same thing for Shamu and stuff but basically they'll fight each other to try to and so what they mm-hmm. say is you don't want to get in trouble because you know we might be out there surfing when this happens we might be a little further out than we should be and when this happens you're safe generally speaking when it's the mom and the calf but when the men are out there or not the men but the the males are out there. And there's a bunch of them. If there is a competition pod, like you don't really want to be in the water. That makes sense. They could mess your stuff up. Yeah, they're all worked up. Yeah, they're all hot and bothered, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so that's cool. So, so SeaWorld um no longer does that. And, and that's why I it just sucks. told you, and that's why it sucks. Kind of the mm-hmm. dolphin show. Listen, I have, I have friends there in both parks. Many of them. It's just I don't know. I'm not into it anymore. You're over it. I'm over it. We're over it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, hey, I just, but honestly, last night I was looking at it and you, you said the thing and I was like, yeah, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty cool. And you're like, it sucks. And I started laughing out loud and that's why I was called you last night. I was like, this is too funny. Yeah. Um, so anyways, there's that. And then do you want to get into comments? Sure. Um, let me start. I know you got a couple comments too, but I've got some as well. Um, let's start with, um, Rev nine fan says, uh, I think Joel saying love you guys at the end is a real testament to being as real as a YouTuber gets. Mm, I don't think any nice. of the other YouTubers I'm subscribed to do that. It makes one feel like family. That's nice. That was cool. Comment. Yeah. That's why I screenshotted it. Yeah. Um, this one's super cool. I believe, um, oh, this person, uh, Veritzel just says, I just want the podcast to last. It doesn't matter if it's every week, every other week, if it's 30 minutes or two hours long, as long as you are motivated to record it, I'm motivated to tune in and listen. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that is cool. Do you got something? I've got a voicemail that we have been neglecting, neglecting the voicemails. And Lucy called about, um, this is like two weeks ago, about Botox, because we talked about Botox. And I just want to be educated on Botox. So I'm going to read it. Hi, this is Lucy. I tried to leave a comment on the last podcast, but it wouldn't let me for some reason. So just calling to say that Botox actually paralyzes the muscles in your face. That's why you can't see any wrinkles. So if you got them early and often enough, you wouldn't get wrinkles. That's kind of what I said. And I haven't Mm -hmm. read this yet, but it, but it also missed out on moving your face. Okay. I'm so Oh boy, I'm trying to read this. Also, not sure if you've seen the documentary searching for sugar man, that's the server Rodriguez and new musician. Okay. No. You have to be a little bit careful when you read the transcript. Bro. It would be like not, not the same word. That was not good. Yeah. Um, I just thought I'd read it. All I would fly. say with the Botox thing is like, do you really need it? No. Do I need it? Does anyone need it? Not really. It's kind of a nice to have. It's kind of an American thing or a Europe, Western Europe thing. Yeah. It just seems a bit like high maintenance stuff to me. Yeah. It's a bit um, what narcissistic. Not a bit. I just think there's too much. There's already enough self care being a human as it is. You know, sort of adding like I'm gonna go fill in lines on my face with like some botulism. Yeah, botulism. What, yeah, and fill it in, and then it'll paralyze all the muscles so that I don't have wrinkles. So that way, people that think I'm crazy. younger than I am. That is crazy. But what if you were single? What if you were newly single, not a guy, a girl, and you thought it would make you look better? Let's say it did make you look better. Or breast implants, and you're a, single. Or if you're married. Well, what's interesting about this, I, I thought about this the other day, because uh, is this idea of the selfish, and I should give credit to Wes Watson for this, but this idea of like you start endeavors based on selfishness, a lot of times because you want to um, impress females or something like that. But for instance, maybe working out and going to the gym 
is a good example of you know, you start out like, oh man, I need to get a nice female. So I'm going to go work yes. out and stuff. And, um, but eventually you get to the point where you get married, right. And you have kids, but then you still work out. Cause it like captured you. Like you yeah. saw that you, you started as a selfish pursuit, but then you kind of were like, no, this is what I need to do to take care of my body. Yeah. And I do it regardless. And so I do it for a different reason. Yeah. Whereas like taking care of your health, that does it. Whereas like, botulism i'm kind of like eh or where would breast implants go in there and we're not women they're the same thing really oh, i mean thing. it's it's i mean well no one is actually a surgery so. no i know i'm just saying from a from a standpoint of i need to improve my my look for myself or for my husband or to get to meet somebody like are you, are you bringing in the right type of attention we're, we're probably not the ones to talk about this i mean Should i know a, a a woman should talk about this, but don't you, we think, don't know, but I mean, you, you come at it from the other point of view, right? Oh, from so, the guy's point of view. So is it, mm. is it draw? I mean, it's going to draw additional partners and mates oh. and so forth in yeah. that sense, like from the animal side of this podcast, but is it really drawing the right type of, Oh, that's is it true. drawing the person that you want to be drawn into that person oh, that wouldn't point. give you the time of day. Now they will. Now they think you're great because you got breast implants. Uh, How's that good? That's true. You know, I but think, you got to attract them first, and then you keep them. I think it's an inside you know? job, right? Yeah, I think you need to take care of the inside, spiritual side, yeah, the probably right. mental, emotional, so forth. You Be build happy that with out yourself, no matter what. Yeah, if you're happy with yourself, then you, and then also not just that, you have to get into things that you're into, right? If you're passionate about whatever, maybe you're passionate about surfing. Then you'll meet people in that field. Yeah, you're going to meet them and they're going to be like, oh my God, this girl so loves this stuff. We could, could we compare this to like, like if I got, I have some gray, if I got like just for men, would yeah, that be a similar thing? Minutes. Cause I want to be able to talk about this, but I, I don't want to act. I don't want to talk out of school. Women have certain, you know, they yeah. have certain feelings about things from yeah. their own body and from, they understand the, the world or dating world or being married to a man or something more, mm -hmm. more than I do. So like if I did, what would I do? Oh, if I did, if I, if I was losing my hair and I got hair transplants, wouldn't that be the same? Yeah. It's right up the old, uh, Botox and breast implant alley. Don't you yeah. think? I mean, getting, yeah. getting hair implant or what is it called? Hair, hair transplant. Hair transplant. It seems like it's in that category. Yeah. I wouldn't do that because well i have hair so i can't say i wouldn't do neither that. would i but it seems it that never seems to look good well oh, a wig how about a wig because people call you plugs when you do it yeah so if you had a wig would i get a wig maybe i would it's the old but you have to think like the the true person that would like be impressed by you would be the guy that's bald that doesn't care what or about doesn't the girl let it bother him and he just is a bald guy and he's just like, yeah, I'm bald. I don't care. And then people are like, that guy's cool because mm. he doesn't, I don't know. I think if you have a wig, people would be like, that guy's yeah. got a wig on. Yeah. And then they're like, he must be insecure. Yeah. He's got a wig on. All right. So you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. What do I, what do we know? What do we know? But I do think for, um, just for men and just five minutes, maybe that'll be our first, uh, podcast sponsor. Yeah. We maybe both need that'd it. be cool. We you come in more than me. Jet black hair. How dare you? You do. This podcast sucks. You can't even see my gray. I can see it. Oh yeah, see there it you totally. Can see it. Don't do, what, what every every day we do a Jesus quote, even though we're like a bit ignorant in the stuff. Oh yeah, people are like quoting the Bible in the comments because we talk about it a lot. But I think well, how does it? What did Jesus say about no people? Are, people are going to think I'm just crazy Christian. Um, he says, uh, you know, don't talk about the. Uh, speck in the other man's eye when you've got a log in yours you've heard this that's what i think about your gray hair situation a speck when you have a log you've never heard this before no. oh come on joel come on i think basically jesus said it, it, it so many amazing things that if you just follow like what he said and what the bible said you'll like you're you'll you'll be great in this world you know yeah like it's all good stuff. It says right here, Matthew seven, three through five. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? 
basically says you hypocrite first take the plank out of your own eye um but i heard log plank spec sawdust it's yeah you get the point don't right? be a hypocrite yeah i mean basically like the funniest thing about like about like your gray it, hair no no oh, about no. like re- not religion i guess like christian or judaism or something is like like if you if you like if you're married and you like look at a woman they're like you already cheated they it's like the same thing it's pretty wild what do you do you believe that or no i kind I of do it. no i mean I like 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 it's saying like everyone's a sinner like first of all just know that that's what they're saying they're saying like like oh oh you didn't you didn't kill somebody then that person killed somebody but you've 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 attacked them or you've talked bad about them you've like kind you of have killed the rage, them in a way right? or you have rage in your heart you just you just didn't do it like that other person did it you yeah. you're doing almost the same thing killings maybe a weird yeah, example you're, because you're just somebody, a coward so you won't do it yeah will, it's yeah. kind of like you're both sinners one just went farther than the other one like yeah. and you act people i think it's because people act like they're like better than people and yeah. god's like saying you're actually not better than that guy that person who did that bad thing whatever that bad thing is you're actually not better you're yeah. all the same you're all messed up you all need jesus you're all messed up and i think that's from the person literally the the people and we all know them and i mean it's all in all of us where we're like oh i didn't do that no no you're still you still did almost as bad as that you think you did way better than that because you didn't you didn't cheat to to bring it back well, you, to gray hair. I feel like you have more gray. Hair I don't. I think you, you just don't more. look at your own hair. So I you're do. Like, maybe your right you side. Well, I have worse on one side than the other. Yeah. Wow. You have a lot of gray hair. Yeah. So you don't like the Bible, huh? You don't like me talking about the Bible. I know you like the Bible. I'm just saying. I don't even know that's, much. Of, I, I don't know. I mean, like I told that's you, that's like Old Testament. I went stuff, to Catholic. What I just said uh, I went to or, you know, I was raised Catholic, but we'd go you know, for years and then not go for years and go, you yeah. know how that goes. And then you yeah. go, for, you get into it for a while. But then in sixth grade, I had to go to like CCD or whatever they call it, where it's like you go after yeah, school. So, you know and have a little to bit. Do so I know a fair amount. I definitely had a lot of questions and didn't get a lot of answers while I was there. And yeah. so that kind of turned me off. Um, but I was baptized when I was 11. Um, so I don't know why they didn't baptize me. Maybe that they had baptized my sister. So I don't know what that was about. Yeah. But either way, so I do know more than your average bear, but I don't know a lot about it. Well, what do you think my my th- my thing of human nature and everyone's a sinner and then it being like, oh, the human thinks they're not as bad as the other one because they didn't do some bad act. And God is basically saying like, no, 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 you're all bad. Like you all need your ego squashed constantly. Don't think you're freaking better then like forget murder, but like you don't think you're not better than that person because you didn't do that thing. Like I, that's what God's saying, and that's absolutely true, right? You're wrong. Okay. Really? No. Here's all I'm saying. I'm not going to speak for that. I'm just going to say what I what I believe, right? Which is that it is. So is it the same thing? Like so, from your perspective, you're saying like God's saying you're going to go to hell either way, and maybe that's true. So I'm not d- debating that. What I'm saying no. is, is it the same thing? the whatever they talk about in the bible like the lust for a yeah, woman yeah yeah versus actually doing it right within marriage outside of marriage yeah or, whatever. or in while you're married or whatever yeah. right so my thought would be in our my own personal belief system would yeah. be that it's all you should be judged based on your actions first and most and foremost that the, you know if you thoughts think things which you kind of don't have control over in a lot of ways but if you think things, but you're like, Hey, that's wrong. I'm not going to act on that. Right. I'm a faithful husband then. And you conduct yourself properly throughout life. That's a big difference from the person who was the, no offense to Tiger Woods, but back in the day when he was doing his thing, right? Like, bro, he hooked up with all these different women and cheated on his wife. Like that's a little different than a faithful is man it that, that is... much different than a man who's constantly thinking those things just not doing like it's different i get it i mean it's a it's a, like you say it's a continuum right? It's, right it's it's on the one end it's the perfect man that is perfectly honest and is not interested in women or other women right and then it slowly goes into hey he has from time to time he has you know thoughts that come in to obsessed with it to actually doing it but i do think now doing it's worse we all know that I'm not saying it's so I'm right. Yeah, but I think it's a way to like squash the ego 
of of people and like i think if 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 that if that wasn't said or or talked about in the bible or the old testament i guess is kind of like like the notion of you're all sinners like doesn't make sense i think, you know what i'm saying like yeah it's a radical like don't act like don't statement. act like 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 he god had to let everybody know you're all sinners it mm -hmm. started you know thousands of years ago in the garden of eden you're all sinners don't forget it they're fallen and like there's some people who go worse and some people do worse things but like don't forget it and if you kind of like oh if you don't do this act and this act and this act you're a great person well there's like no no you thought that like you're still you're 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 almost as bad yeah have you ever heard of and the, i think that's powerful have you heard of the term the camel's nose under the tent have you heard of that no but the idea is right like that I, it's the idea of these these negative or evil thoughts, whatever you'd call them, right? Is that it's like yeah, it's the beginning. You know, the camel the camel gets his nose on a tent and it stands up, and now it's like yeah. so so by you know the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but you start to do these little these little transgressions yeah, and yeah. over the long haul. Yeah. Isn't it funny from the podcast perspective that like we know so little about this stuff, but we're kind of interested in, so we talk about it. Yeah, and then like we always have this great quote we want to say, but we don't know anything, so we're like ah. I'm sure but we should have Ben Shapiro on or something. people led. Yeah. And then, um, have you ever heard of that? Is it Dennis Prager? Yeah. From Prager university. Yeah. He had a series that was on, um, the 10 commandments. It's really popular on YouTube. It just talks about yeah. like, how important the 10 commandments are. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like commandments. Right. But I know 100% of what Dennis Prager knows. Also, Louis CK has a whole special where he like, <laughs> reads the Bible. And it's freaking funny. Really? Oh yeah. He'll like be like, and it's not like sacrilege. Like in a way, if you want my opinions on this, um, he's not like essing on on religion or the Bible, in my opinion, because he's he's actually paying it time. He's giving it time. Does he, that make sense? He's he not avoiding it? it. He's making fun in a way of the stories. And and like he's like when when Jesus's wife is at a oh, Jesus's wife uh, Jesus and mom is at a wedding, and then he's reading the passage where the mom goes up to Jesus and goes, "There's no wine at this wedding," and he's like, "She's like every other mom. Like mm -hmm. where where the hell's the wine?" Yeah. And it's kind of like he's not he's, I like that he's talking about it and bringing it to light and not like this is fake, this is all nonsense. He's like making fun of it, in which it should be. Anything can be made fun of by comedians and they're not putting it down because they're making fun of it in a way. Mm. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, like should handicapped people be, be made fun of by comedians? Yes. Because they're like everybody else. Because oh, so they do. No one that's off limits. So no, no one's, no one's special enough to not be made fun of. And the Bible is included. Now, if he were to be like, this is nonsense. You should not believe in it. There's no good stories in here. That's a different story. That's not, that's not being funny or making fun of something. That is that there's a point to that. What you do know, you, what do you think about like? So I think it's interesting with, and I've heard uh, like where, as, as it relates to Islam, right? How do we and get heard, this back to dogs? I think it's impossible. It's impossible. At this okay, point. go ahead. So like the difference between like or Islam and Christianity, at least from like a what you can say and not say perspective, right? Yeah. And then uh, the two people I think of is uh, Khabib, and then who's the popular influencer Andrew Tate that yeah, everyone yeah, talks yeah. about. And Andrew he's, Tate, he's Muslim. Now. He converted to Islam, right? But so I always think it's funny that in general, right, someone can say something bad about God or Jesus and people go, oh, whatever. Like, oh, I know. And it's part of it is, it's is so the United States. And that's just how yeah. it is here in other probably Western Europe and other places. But um, the other side is like, at least from Khabib, who's obviously was like one of the best fighters of all time. His attitude, in my opinion, like he's a devout Muslim. It's like if you say something really bad about God or Islam or something, like he's coming after you, dude. Like he'll in what way? He'll like beat your ass. Like he, if you like disrespect his God, yeah. he'll come after you. Mm. And so I, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying it's different. If you really believe what you believe, right? If you yeah. really are a devout believer, yeah. Like, do you let that slide? Like, I understand where he's coming from in that mm. perspective. Like, do not disrespect what I believe in kind of thing hmm. but we come from such a different world yeah. like he's coming from dagestan and russia and you know yeah. we're born and raised in southern california like it's a different thing you know but it's just but also too, it there's, works 
there's a difference between being allowed to do something and wanting to do it. Like for instance, like burning stuff, burning holy, holy, you know, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, holy books. Like, you know, do people have the right to do it? I think they do, but it's like, should you be doing it? I don't think so. No. So it's like, don't do it to either of them. Right. Yeah. Because it's, and also if you're not into it, just don't be into it. I know. Like, don't be, don't be rude, dude. It's like a dog. Don't be rude. dog. Yeah. It's all messed up. See how I brought that back to dogs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was crazy. All right. How do we we're talk off about this, this stuff? I don't what else do you want to talk about? We haven't got to Sopranos yet. Oh, I got more comments. Oh, yeah. Do comments. The comments always bring us back to reality. Yeah. We should just add like a uninformed Bible section of this. Oh, my God. We're the worst. We are pretty bad. Um, okay. What else we got? Um, here we go. This guy says, it's not crazy the way you explained it. It is creepy. If your dog doesn't come and you go get them, bring them to your recall spot. Don't compare kids to dogs. Yeah. Totally out of context. Text. Will Atherton says, go get them if they ignore. And then Anna, a, a stesia, um, it says, children and dogs are not the same. Absolutely not. It's the level of responsibility for their lives that is. Children, oh, that's a good point. Children and dogs are unconscious of a certain amount of things around them. That's why it is important that at least they pay attention to you when you call them. And then he says yes. That's a good point. That's why my child analogy worked with creeper creeper guy, you know, mm. and me saying to my 14 year old, come here. Like I wouldn't ask you to come here if it wasn't important. I like how he says they're not this, you know, don't compare them. They're this not is the from same. the last it's totally out of uh, it's totally out of context. And then this person oh. goes. It is this. They're like basically saying, yeah, it is the same to the degree that it's important that they follow what you're saying. Right. The second person's right. Yeah. The first course. person commented like 10 comments. Yeah. They were all negative. Like hated, hated it. Yeah. Who, they were like, this person's stupid. Yeah. So that's, I don't know. I just think it is interesting, but I don't like, I mean, have an opinion, but at the same time, people go, don't compare dogs and people. Well, it's like, can we compare them to the extent that they're the same? Why not? Of course you can. We're There's going to. social, intelligent beings that live in our house and in our world. Like a lion to a person would be a lot more tough and a bacteria to a person would be a lot more tough. But dogs and people, like there are not a lot of similarities in many ways. Like, there they are live in our houses. Are yeah. They're social. I mean, but they're if you think about it. a part of us. Like you can't compare them. It's like, well, okay, they're mammals, right? They yep. eat food, right? They drink water. Like they raise their young. I mean, you can see fish, it starts to get a bit blurry. Yeah. But not with there's a lot in common. And then even I think too with my my Bengal cat, like you realize like some cat the connection. Talk. Yeah, I always I throw a shout out to some of our cat lovers out there. Some of the connection that you build with an animal is like pretty deep. Yeah. You know, especially like you're like, why does this cat love me so much? Yeah. Like why? So anyways, anything else on that? No. Um, I like Oh, I, I already stole this person's joke. Mall watch says, what's the deal with all the dog training on my lifestyle podcast? I know. Can we please get back to fighting on or fighting bums on the beach, yelling oh, yeah, at road I workers and hating on the girl scouts. Oh, you yeah. Did, you said so funny. I did. I haven't uh, gotten into any altercations in since the cop, the bum, then the cop, no street. Street fights? No, over parking spots. I'm chilling out. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's, it was just just a phase. Juno Abbey says people just don't understand the more intuitive type of training anymore. The most logical action to take when a dog won't come is to go get the dang dog. But somehow the virtuous force-free brigade has decided that dogs are too emotionally complex and fragile. That's right. So we must do a bunch of negotiating and simply grabbing them and saying, "Knock it off." After a behavior is somehow cruel and rough, laugh your face. The force-free trainers, they they have it all wrong. This is not opinion. This just isn't. There is there is no segment of life or the population or interactions between humans and children or humans and adults or humans and 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 employers that is like the force-free movement. There's no interactions anywhere in the world that is like the force free movement the force free movement 
essentially the animal or they can never experience um, any uncomfortableness or the goal is to never experience any uncomfortableness, to never experience anything that is physically painful in any way. That is the goal of it. And it is so strange to me. Like, like, do you think that a force-free trainer, have you ever seen the videos where like the people play a trick on their kid and the kid starts crying and people think it's funny. Like Jimmy Kimmel used to do that thing where, um, the parents would eat all the Halloween candy and then the kids would cry. Yeah. They think that's funny, but that's not okay for a dog. That's what they, that's what they think. What's what that's a child who's going through real emotional pain at that moment. Oh, it's funny. It's hilarious. Oh, there's a dog who's a little uncomfortable. That's unacceptable. Well, it's, you could, you could tie it back to the, what do they call it? The captivity piece, right? Of the captivity of an animal that they're always against captivity under pretty much all scenarios. Right. But it's weird. Cause even those are wild animals, but even domesticated animals, they're still in captivity in a sense. Yeah. But they have their, their dog or cat in a captivity. It's, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a kid, kid analogy, you know, like it's, it's like, we're all in captivity to a degree. Right? Yeah. Maybe not. Sort of. 11. So our Patrick says uh, at 11.24. Oh, Patrick. 11, tw- 11 minutes in, and he's still talking about dog training. What is happening? This has to be at least 15% out of normal. Our Patrick picked up on the percentages thing that I talk about a lot with dog training, and then he, he oh. really harped on that in a good way. This person actually... He weirdly picked up on that. This person actually is kind of saying an opposite thing. Joy Folk says, Joy Folk Nine Services uh, says, happy there's more dog talk this time. I got ish from someone using the gentle leader your way. I have been for, uh, for years, but not on social media public. Uh, allegedly causes spinal issues and a few other nasty comments. Have you heard of this? Uh, how do you take negative comments? Do you ignore, engage in debate? Well, we know that wow. delete block. Also, can you discuss genetics and how much that's a big question, how much they play a part in behavior and training? Some believe it huge. Others believe it's bogus. Okay. So um, there. I, mean, um I believe that gentle leaders can cause, um, spinal problems. I, I think you have to use them pretty harshly for that to happen. And you also have to probably use it wrong in the way that you're not pulling down to the side and you're versus yeah. pulling backwards. Backwards is worse. Hard to the side is not great. Um, you know, but it's the best way to control an animal. I'll say this real quick about gentle leaders. I don't know if anybody cares. Um, nobody ever agrees with me on this. They have been training horses with a head halter for 2000 years. They have never come up with a better way. A head halter is the best way to control. I'm not in a bad way, but just sort of manually control yeah. a, lo- a a large animal. They are not going prong on a on a on a on a horse. They are not going e collar on a horse to control it while they're riding it. They have figured it out and civilizations are either won or lost, continued or or d- died based on the notion of controlling a horse the best way. You love this stuff. I love it. I think it's the single best argument for a gentle leader there is. It's kind of like me with aggressive animals or or with like my life has, I've had animals in front of me that can kill me. I had to learn training really well or I would die. Civilizations had to learn how to do their horses really well or the civilization would die or their tribe would die. Mm -hmm. So the, the cream rises to the top when you have stakes like that. And it hasn't changed in the horse industry. My, 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 uh, if I were to take my, put my thinking cap on yes. and, and try to, to push first, back first oh. part of, yeah, you know, and I mean, they're just saying that they're getting flack. They're not saying that this is oh. what they believe. Right. But this is allegedly causes spinal issues. So my first thought would be someone said that to her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They said that they, they've been using it your way and then they get flamed in the comments for the, using oh. the gentle leader. So my thought, the first piece would be causes spinal issues. So first of all, how do you know that, right? How do you know it causes spinal issues? So did you have a dog that had a spinal issue when you were using a gentle leader? Did you read about it? Is there studies about it? 
where did you get this information from? And yes. then on top of that, there's that whole continuum of how much force are you putting behind, right? Could you create spinal issues if you yank a generator hard enough? Of course, right? But why would you do that? Like the, the, po the dose makes the poison, right? As they say, right? Like it depends. And then also you could teach them with a gentle leader and then you can, what do they call the extinct? Fade it out. Yeah, you fade it out. So like, why do you need to have a gentle leader on for seven years? Yeah. You shouldn't, right? Yeah, like, no. How long should they have a gentle leader on for? It depends. But like, I'll tell people like, don't worry about getting this off. Your dog's out of its mind. I, I can tell you how to fade it out, but just use it for now. But maybe, I mean, if they were act, I mean, the problem is people aren't actively working on some of this stuff. Some people just show up to you, get help, go home, yeah, then sit on the couch, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but if you were actively working your, with your dog for the last year or two, I would hope- Six would, months. Yeah, you should be done with the gentle leader. Yeah. And in which case, using a gentle leader for six months is probably less hard on whatever, the jaw, any of these things versus using it for six years. Yeah. So, um, how sure. do you take negative comments, Joel? Oh, uh, I generally take them pretty well. If it's about my dog training, I take it well. Like I believe in the way I train. I think I take it well. If it's about me, I think I take it well. There's some, what, what don't I take well? Uh, people on Instagram criticizing you. Oh yeah. I don't, I guess I don't take out of context things. Well, does that make sense? You don't like being attacked. I guess I don't like, yeah. That's it. And then what did she ask? Genetics? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Does it say you delete or block? You don't almost never delete or block people. No, almost never. Yeah. I don't know the last person I deleted or blocked. But the thing on just for the uh, public service announcement for this YouTube is obviously from an administration perspective, we can uh, delete any comment. Uh, also, YouTube oh. will automatically delete or um not delete but it moves them to a different section that people can't see and we'd have to review them which we never do because like what i don't even know where that section is yeah there's a section that, i know where instagram section is for it's, that it's pretty funny because i went through it one time and it was like all these like ridiculously like cussing and swearing stuff that was going on i, I called you about it. that it's pretty funny but then but then the other thing is if you cause trouble on the podcast we can just have it so that you're ghosted so that no one sees your comments we could so just know. It's good to know. Um, uh, what do we got here? Okay. Oh, and then the last part was about genetics. Can you discuss genetics and how much they play a part in behavior and training? Some believe it huge, others bogus. Other oh my gosh. Bogus. What a giant question. Genetics and, and the part they play. Um, yeah, they play a big part in everything. Like my kids look like me. Um, do you think my son acts like me? He looks a lot like you. He looks like me. But then I, mean, I think but they're then talking about dogs. Nature but... versus nurture. Yeah, but it's the same. Like don't compare dogs to Yeah. Nature versus nurture. It's a tough line to walk or figure out. Like it's it's so freaking hard. It's like the yeah, it's I mean, people will say, like, um, I know somebody who has um three biological kids and the oldest was adopted and i always will be like he looks so much like you and they're like yeah but he's adopted I'm yeah like, yeah but he still looks a lot like you so i think there's some facial mannerisms since they had him since he was a baby that like they copy the the way For people sure. look and stuff and so that stuff is definitely I remember forrest gump when forrest gump was sitting on the rock like this and his little son was sitting the same way yeah and it's like neat uh so then so that and piece, he didn't grow up with his that piece is nurture right the piece of the piece of them looking having the same facial mannerisms when they're not your biological kid that's nurture, nurture they yes. got that from yes being the environment right but then yeah like the forrest gump thing is he wasn't even he around wasn't him even around yeah. so that was just that happens he, for sure yeah it's probably like more dogs and people it's probably like it's a lot of nature like it just is like we talked about it on a few called podcasts ago like your kids kind of come out like kind of who they are but it also is you know? a lot nurture too, yeah. especially you start thinking about, imagine you're world-class wrestler in jujitsu, right? And then you have kids and it's like, now you're just, all you talk about is jujitsu and wrestling and stuff like that. And then you put them in 
uh, classes early on and they wrestle there until they're in college and stuff. It's like, oh, wow, look at you, man. It's like, you must really be uh, born with this. It's like, yeah. well, yeah, but I, my dad spent his whole life with me on the mats, like pushing me to become this person. Yeah. Right? Just like George Bush Jr. Or was it George W. Bush, right? Mm -hmm. Like, was he just destined to be president or was his dad the president and probably helped groom him to become one? Yes, that. Well, that's like, different stuff like acting and like, like athletics and like singing would be the interesting. Like, it's not a meritocracy in like Hollywood and in the, in, in that industry and then in sports it's it's absolutely a meritocracy like lebron james's son might get drafted like one position l better yeah, because he's light. lebron james. it's a, it's like almost nothing yeah it's very like slight. for the ticket sales he might get drafted a little higher but essentially he's can he perform or not he's gonna go at this round at this pick yeah doesn't matter no i agree i think which is good and the way it should be yeah and then hollywood but right like, it's such an unfair thing sorry hollywood and the music industry yeah you're right like it's, it's the most nonsense well it's all connections based right and so, so yeah. you're not gonna there's so many reasons why they could give the part to someone else versus you yeah. or like even i start to think about this sometimes with um maybe 80s and 70s classic rock and other types of popular music where i'm like was this actually the best band or were they related to some executive who gave them a deal? Yeah, especially just like, I think nowadays more, like not even a band, but like a single singer. You, you know, like, well. I think they're more likely to earn it now. Because nowadays people are coming up on YouTube and stuff and are building their own followings without a record company. Oh, and that's so true. Like they're actually doing that's a it. Good point. And now there's a lot more of this. Oh, like, I mean, we get some emails about oh, I like what you're doing with the YouTube. We could help you with this and that. And it's like, we can help grow your channel. And I'm like, I bet you haven't grown a channel the way this channel's grown, yeah. you know? So you're like, how are you going to help me? But there's a lot of like, you know, sleeping with the boss in Hollywood and in uh, music. Politics too, I hear. Yeah. Is that common? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we, we we knocked that one out. That was a good question. Common sense. I like that name. Uh, common sense says, I enjoy the once a week podcast. Uh, even enjoyed the first ones you did that were two hours. However, I do understand the new training course you will be doing will take up a lot of time. With that yeah. being said, a lot of people said that. Um, try to do it at least once a week and at least one and a half hour length. Otherwise, that we the banter we all enjoy may disappear because of a time constraint. That's a good comment. Yeah. Right. Speaking of time constraints. Okay, well, we have. I have a couple more okay. I have to get through. Lucy Goosey. Speaking of which, I think you were talking about Lucy. So Lucy Goosey says, uh, "I don't pick the names, guys. Have you considered an automatic reply permanent I have set one. on your mail? Yeah, we do have one, but we don't have one on the Beckman. Oh, that's one. true. Um, so that's a that. good point. Um, okay, that was that was a piece there. Um, this I know you don't like when when we do any congratulatory stuff on the podcast, but I do think this is funny. Uh, Miley says." You two are so funny. I love how the two of you work so well together, so spontaneously honest, more than more like best friends and business partners. This is my first time listening. I I have a Malinois puppy. I am her trainer. She drives me crazy. She destroyed every single bed I bought her. She destroyed my beautiful yard. She ate my basil plant. Yes, chomped down the whole plant, but I wouldn't have it any other way. She is so smart. She scares me. She talks to me all the time. She complains when she's not happy and she herds two other small dogs. Hey, love you two funny people. I thought that was kind of nice, right? That's nice. I think that was cool. And then I have one more. Did you screenshot any or no? No. Okay. I looked at them all. Man, you're slacking. I know. Um, where's the last one here? Um, right here, I think. Okay. Um, no, I think I'm good. I think I've had enough. All right. Cool. Let's be done. You good? Yeah. Love you guys. All right. Oh, tell them when to be here. Tuesday. The 26th. Tuesday, the 26th at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. Might want to write that and, down. And uh, talk to us. Cool. In the chat.